Stop treating me like a child. You're talking down to me. When do you suppose we reach this moment where we insist that we must be treated like an adult? And how is it that once we are adults, we would gladly go back to having a nap time like we did in kindergarten? Today, let's look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, where Jesus says we have to become like little children, not to get a nap time, but to enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus speaks and is speaking to his disciples in Matthew chapter 18 at verse 2. It says, Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. And then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus says become like little children, it's obvious that he doesn't mean we need to be shorter or even that we take a nap every day. Have you noticed nap time is a big theme for me today? No, Jesus assumes that innocence and trust is part of the character of children. He called the child we're reading about to him. He says he called him into the midst of them and the child came right when he called him. And then the child sat there while Jesus talked about the kid. Isn't that interesting? Kids are used to that. Their whole life is basically governed by someone else. So think about the relationship Jesus gave you and gave me in those terms. As a child, God's design was that you and I grow up in a loving, caring, nurturing, providing environment. It's the pattern he provided for the first people he created, Adam and Eve, right there, put in the garden that he made for them. And it's supposed to be the pattern you and I grew up in, provided for, cared for loved. Let's speak to that ideal pattern. Uh, Like growing up as a child in your house. As a child, you lived under a roof of a house that someone else bought. I lived in a house that someone else bought, eating food that someone else bought, prepared for me, and set at a table that I also didn't buy, on a chair that someone else provided. I slept in a bed. You slept in a bed that somebody else bought for us. We wore clothes that somebody else provided. We took a bath or took a shower in water someone else paid for using soap someone else gave to us. We read books that someone else bought for us under lights that somebody else paid for on chairs that someone else provided. You kind of get the idea, don't you? All of those are provided, but we were allowed to. We were invited to participate in them. Sometimes growing up, I didn't want to eat what was being provided for me at dinner, so I went to bed hungry. And sometimes I didn't put my dirty clothes in the wash basket or in the washing machine, so I didn't get to wear my favorite pants for after school playtime. Sometimes I fell asleep on the floor instead of my comfortable bed and I woke up cold and miserable. That's the way it is growing up as a kid. You live in somebody else's house, eating food somebody else provides, given care by someone else. John tells us in the book of 1 John chapter 1 it says, or chapter 5 it says everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. So that means if you believe in Jesus you're a child of God. Because of Jesus I'm a child of God. I live in a relationship that God built for me. When Jesus says we're to come to him like children, I believe this is the picture he's trying to convey to us. This is what he is talking about, to live in the life that God has provided. There is forgiveness that someone else, Jesus, bought for me. There is mercy that someone else, Jesus, provided. There is grace that someone else, Jesus, gives. All of these are poured into and all over my heart and life. And like being stubborn at the dinner table when I was 10, I can refuse to take in and share Jesus' grace, mercy, goodness, forgiveness, and kindness. The Bible tells me clearly that I can resist the Holy Spirit. The book of Galatians in chapter 5 urges me to let the Holy Spirit guide my life but I can insist on guiding it all by myself. Is there a problem with the house of salvation and grace and mercy that Jesus has provided for me? Is there anything wrong with what Jesus has provided? Oh no, it is perfect, absolutely perfect, absolutely complete. 
and absolutely perfect for me. So what does this look like every day, living like a child of God? Well, think about what Jesus said about entering into the kingdom of God. He told me to be like a child. He also told me in Matthew chapter 6, not to store up treasures on earth, but to seek first the kingdom of God. Well, that's a, an amazing and interesting challenge today, isn't it? Because here's what I hear from people everywhere. Well, yes, I trust God, but I also know I have to... Uh, we, we use very sophisticated and biblical terms for that. Yes, I trust God, but I also have to be a good steward. Yes, I trust Jesus, but I also have to take care of practical things. Yes, I believe in God, and yes, I trust Jesus, but I also have to, well, apparently store up truckloads of toilet paper. That's interesting, isn't it? As a kid, what did you know about toilet paper? Just as a for instance, I'm not picking on anyone. But just as a for instance, what did you know about toilet paper? Did you even know where toilet paper came from? I know that I personally wasn't a big one for replacing the old two-ply when the roll ran empty. Somehow, it just magically appeared. Ooh, a toilet paper fairy must have been living in my house. Jesus tells me not to worry about what I eat or drink or wear. And he tells us that unbelievers are dominated by these things, dominated by the worry about these things. Jesus says we should be content in what we have today. Now listen, I'm not here to talk you out of your pandemic planning or your quarantine routine. I'm simply here to say, remember what Jesus said about trusting him. He said that getting into the kingdom of God requires me to trust him just like a child. A child is more like the lilies of the field or the sparrows in the sky than the warrior that I have become. I've perfected my practice of worrying. And Jesus says, it's not like a lily of the field. And it's not like a sparrow in the sky to worry that way. And it's certainly not like a child. I don't want to be dominated by my worries over what comes next. I want to remember that Jesus came and he paid for my life and he gave me his life instead. I want to remember that God is working in me, giving me the desire and the power to do what pleases him. I want to trust Jesus today. And I know that that want to, that desire, well, that comes from God. Is Jesus gently telling you to trust him more today? If he is, you can pray with me. Here's a little prayer we could pray together. Jesus, thank you for making the only way for me to belong to you. You did this by dying on the cross for me and forgiving my sins. Jesus, please keep working in my heart to draw me close to you and teach me to trust you with my whole life. I know that you are working in me, giving me the desire and the power to trust you every day. In your name I pray. Amen. You know, if you would like to have more information about following Jesus, you can contact New Song by email. We're available to you at info, I-N-F-O, at mynewsongcc.com. We would love to hear from you, and we would love to give you more information about following Jesus. God bless you today. Be encouraged. God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him.